man, there's a lot of Sony news this week, a lot of Sony leaks. And um, it looks as though, not entirely confirmed, it could be a fake, but it looks as though we got a first look at Sony's Project Q handheld. And, well, this isn't the venue or the or the presentational method that you would want to debut a new piece of technology. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, Oliver, it was kind of underwhelming, really, wasn't it? Yeah, it kind of just looks like a fairly simple Android device with a kind of controller shell around it. The interface looks like pretty regular Android as far as I'm aware, like you might see in a tablet. I mean, hopefully in the final version, Sony would have some kind of skin over it to make it look nicer than this because this really does look very bare bones. Um, yes, they're not going to release it like that. There's no way. No, there, no there, there's no way. And then there's an <laughs> app called QC Test, uh, which presumably is the Qualcomm Test app. So it presumably has like a Snapdragon chip under the hood that doesn't really narrow it down very much because Snapdragon chips come in all ranges of different power. But, you know, and probably the device is really just going to be an exclusive streaming device like Sony has stated. So mm-hmm. uh, to me, this does not look that great. I still think there could be a lot of value to the device if it delivers very, very high quality streaming. That's a big question mark. Certainly, this doesn't really indicate anything on that front. But uh, the teardown that they did does make it look a little bit cheap and does make me a little bit more skeptical of the value of this device. But it's hard to say without actually seeing that streaming experience, because if that's good, you know, it could be interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what what did you think of it? I mean, it was the most unflattering way to present a device, you know, basically a pretty low quality video. Um, you didn't actually see any of the software of the device itself. And um, yeah, and then they sort of tore it apart and it looked pretty cheap, I'd say. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to describe it. It does look like just a controller add-on for a cell phone. It looks like they slam like a little uh, Android tablet in between this plastic mold and that's it. It doesn't have any of the typical like design uh, flourishes that we expect from Sony handhelds in the past, right? Like it really does just like, well, we'll just use the DualSense shell and kind of extend it and put this thing in there. Uh, but the mm. fact that it is an Android based system does at least give me some hope that it could be jailbroken and <laughs> turned into something yeah. else. You know, it's basically another, not that there's not plenty of options on the market already for Android based emulation devices, but you know, it it would be cool if it could be used for something other than streaming is what I'm saying that could give it more utility down the line that it won't have by being a streaming only device. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have, uh, in theory, I mean, well, let's, let's be clear here. The concept of having a, a dual sense, um, in a kind of handheld form is a, a pretty compelling one, I'd say. But at the same time, yeah, I'd be wanting to use GeForce Now on it <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to Remote Play. So I guess the concept that it is an Android device potentially means it's hackable um, to, to be able to support other features, possibly emulators as well. The question is whether Sony are going to take a lot of time to lock it down. Right. Um, and, but, you know, fundamentally, what is the core use case of the device? It's to stream PlayStation 5 games. We still have no real idea of whether it's just going to be standard remote play. We've said it several times in the past. That's not really no, good enough. There's also, um, <laughs> this has to be running some sort of integrated SOC, right? So given the time that this is intended to release, I wonder how it compares to the specs on a PS Vita, right? Like... <laughs> I'm actually wondering if it, if it's a potent enough SOC in there that it could actually just emulate PS Vita and PSP stuff yeah. and become sort of like, you know, an extension of those systems uh, using an official PlayStation product. Mm. I'm slightly sort of underwhelmed by this footage and I'm kind of hoping it is fake because the lineage of um, Sony's handheld devices is 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 awesome, right? I mean, obviously, the the PSP is kind of legendary for what it achieved. It didn't quite match the DS in terms of unit sales, but it was very successful. Still still very successful, absolutely. It had a fantastic screen, um, uh, trailing, ghosting apart. You know, it was was really, really cool. Vita comes along, OLED screen. Um, Some of the games we had on that were just were just brilliant, but it was you know didn't quite hit the target as a 
as a sort of dedicated handheld device. It didn't really have the proper backing from Sony, uh, but it was a it was a really well built piece of kit, right? It was desirable. You wanted it, and that's not what I'm getting from, from this wow. week's footage. Looking at the at these charts here, so the PSP was a, the eleventh best selling console ever. Right? right, that's pretty good. <laughs> like uh, PS2, DS, Switch, PS4. Oh, basically all the PlayStations except for Vita, <laughs> uh, and stuff like Xbox 360 and Wii. Those are ahead of it, but there are loads below it. So, like the PSP actually sold is over 80 million units. Right, that's a lot. That's wow. a that's a good amount of consoles right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas PS Vita is more in below 20 million. <laughs> so it 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 did not do nearly as well as we know. I was thinking the other day that there was a really interesting opportunity for Sony to maybe have a bit more of a conventional successor device to something like the PS Vita, except maybe it would focus on PS1, PS2, uh, PSP, and PS, PS Vita games as emulating those titles. And then it would also have some streaming capabilities. You yeah. know, like, just give it a bit of local device capability. It doesn't need new software because, you know, there's a tremendous variety of software for older PlayStation devices and give that to users and make that a new mobile device, that might be mm -hmm. really compelling. Whereas this seems very limited. Unless you can open it up and just run whatever emulators on it, then that'd be really cool. Because like you said, the controller is very high quality and that could be a good experience. But uh, so far, just as a streaming device, it seems like unnecessarily limited for what the hardware is probably capable yeah. of. I, re I, I really like that idea, Oliver. I think that actually does have promise to be an official PlayStation device that's portable focused on classic games. You know, that would also encourage them to release more of those games again. Many of them have already been released on prior storefronts, but no longer available on the modern ones. But this would be a chance to do that, right? Uh, just like a celebration of classic PlayStation games on a dedicated handheld that also supports the streaming feature. I think that would be a, such an easy sell comparatively, and it would probably get people excited. Um, you know the problem, though. What's right? that? You, you run a game locally, and you have pristine image quality, and then you have the streaming experience from your cutting-edge PlayStation 5, and, and there's the potential that the streaming uh, quality just won't be up to scratch. It will look poor. You're, you're not wrong. Quality. Still, <laughs> yeah. I think it's not really where Sony's marketing no. aim is going to lie for this. It's it's definitely a companion device for the PlayStation Five. And uh, again, you know, there's a lot going on here. Let's say there is going to be a, a new PlayStation Five arriving later this year, per Tom Henderson, and the the Project Q handheld. There's going to be a lot for us to get our teeth into uh, uh, towards the end of the year, as if we haven't got enough I know. <laughs> to be getting on with already. <laughs> but yes, right now, that's what we've got to go on. And uh, I've got to say that, well, I'm, I'm hoping for, for better from uh, the actual hands-on experience. 